Hello everyone, my name is Rhett. Today's topic, what is suspension travel, articulation, and flex? Okay, so I've drawn quite a few things here. It would take me too long to draw that and I'd make a mess of it. So I've got travel here, articulation here, flex here. This is an independently sprung vehicle. This is a solid axle vehicle. Sometimes there are differences, sometimes not. So in the case of travel, what I've tried to do is make the distance of these arrows proportionate, roughly proportionate to a typical scenario. It just helps illustrate the point. Typically you'll have more downward travel than upward, and hence these arrows are longer for downward, shorter for upward. Okay, the key thing about travel is that it's in the vertical plane. Okay, so it's only, we're only looking at what happens vertically. Vertically upwards, vertically downwards, vertically upwards, vertically downwards. Okay, so hopefully people understand travel now. So I'll move on to articulation and compare the two. In the case of independent suspension, travel equals articulation. The amount that this one goes up, as represented here, is the same. And the amount that this one goes down, as represented here, is the same. So they're equal. In the case of a solid axle, they're different. This distance, the total amount of travel, total being the amount of the upward and the downward, that's represented here, that total amount there. That is supposed to be the same as that, because that is pretty much the case. These are the bump stops here. Now the angle the axle has articulated. Now for articulation with the solid axle, you get more than you get with the travel in a solid axle. The reason for that is this part of the axle beyond that vertical plane has been thrown downwards. So you get a bit more. This part has been thrown upwards, so you get a bit more. So this amount here can easily be at least two inches, maybe more, maybe significantly more than this. Okay, so what is flex? <clears throat> flex is actually how much it moves in practice. And that depends on load. So if you take, for example, a modern dual cab with no load in it, well, the flex won't be as much as the articulation. The articulation is the total amount that it can move. The flex is how much it moves in practice. So if you have a very stiffly sprung vehicle and you have no load on it, typically you won't get the full articulation you'll get a reduced amount. Now, if you've got a wheel in the air, it's gonna go down the same amount, but the wheel won't get up as far. This spring, this sway bar, it won't compress as much. Now, you can take a vehicle like a two-wheel Range Rover, and the spring rates were so soft, and it didn't have sway bars, that flex and articulation were almost always the same. You could have an unladen two-wheel Range Rover, and it will fully articulate with no load. Also due to the design of the rear suspension and the Berg self-leveling unit. So that's just another different example. So when you're out there talking about how much your truck flexes, articulates or travels, now you know what you're talking about and if your mate doesn't, make sure he sees this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time. See you later.